If you just started learning Houdini, you're probably learning it wrong. Let me explain. So I've seen this question asked a lot recently where people are saying, hey, I can't learn Houdini, I'm struggling to learn Houdini. And I just wanted to kind of go over what I think is probably the best way to start out with Houdini and kind of why I feel like people are failing to learn it or taking a longer time to learn it. So the first mistake that I see people make is they start off by trying to recreate or just make their favorite type of simulation or their favorite type of procedural generator. I don't think this is a good place to start because both of those things rely on something that we're gonna go over here in just a second, but it under, you have to have an understanding of the kind of basics of Houdini, how Houdini works in order to really to take advantage of both of those things, simulations and procedural generators. Because Houdini doesn't really work like other softwares. Other softwares act more like interfaces for tools rather than the, what Houdini is, which is more like a backend type of developer situation. And what do I mean by that is like in Cinema 4D, you have X particles. X particles is a, a great tool, but it is basically just a simulation tool set that's kind of wrapped up and made pretty to just expose you to the parameters that you need to create the different tools. Houdini more is like you have all these little building blocks that you put together that you then can create interfaces for, but it starts out as those building blocks that you have to put together in order to make the things that you wanna make. So where should you start in Houdini? In my opinion, the best place to start is with attributes. Attributes are kind of the backbone of Houdini. They're used literally everywhere inside of Houdini, and that's kind of the main difference between Houdini and other packages. It's your exposure to the attributes and how to manipulate them. So they all exist in other packages, and just real quick, an attribute is something like normals, uh, maybe the color of the vertex or the, the points, the position of those points, uh, maybe the age of particles, things like that. Those are all attributes that are inside of Houdini, but they're also inside of other softwares, especially in Maya and Cinema 4D, 3ds Max. Normals you're going to run into a lot. Those are going to be kind of how the object is shaded. So you're exposed to them somewhat in other software, but not to the extent that you are inside of Houdini. And in Houdini, you literally have a geometry spreadsheet that has a list of every single point inside of your mesh, or if it's a packed geometry, every geometry has a different point assigned to it. And on those points is all of the different attributes, and you have different levels of attributes as well. You have point, detail, primitive, um, and vertex attributes. So different levels of attributes that you can have attributes assigned to the different things and do different things with, but they're used for pretty much everything inside of Houdini. And that's kind of the, the big thing that you need to understand with Houdini is you need to understand those attributes because they're used everywhere inside of simulations. You can use them to drive your procedural generators. They're even used in almost every node. So they're, in, they're created with most nodes as well. So what makes Houdini different from those other applications? Attributes aren't really only used on the back end inside of Houdini. Uh, like I said, you're using them for pretty much everything that you do. Whereas those other applications, like your po point position, that's gonna be something that is gonna be inside of every application, but it's kind of in the back end. You don't really have that exposure to the point position like you do inside of Houdini. And you can, use all the different attributes to do different things. You can manipulate them all using the different nodes. There's even VOPS, which you can access a bunch of different attributes or all your attributes inside of VOPS and manipulate them inside of there as well as inside of VEX. So you have a lot of freedom inside of Houdini that you don't necessarily have inside of other applications. Like I stated previously, attributes are used 
everywhere and they're also created with almost every single node if not every single node inside of Houdini. You have an option to create or manipulate all of the attributes inside of Houdini. And you can even create your own custom attributes if you want and you can store pretty much any information that you want. You can literally create a point attribute that's called hello and have it say I hate learning Houdini because it's so difficult if you want it to or whatever you wanted to make. And at any time, as I said before, you can see the values or actually you can even visualize the attributes inside Houdini. So you're going to be able to see them through the, the geometry spreadsheet. You can also create the little vis visualizations of them. So you can visualize vectors and, and the color and different things inside of Houdini super easily. Um, with the newer versions of Houdini, you just can middle mouse button on on some of the attributes and it'll create a visualizer for you. They can be used to create all sorts of things. So procedural selections, you can drive parameters, or you can even use them at render time, which you're probably used to inside of other, other software packages. So stuff like your point color, um, you're gonna be using that to use inside of maybe like Redshift or whatever it is. To, to color your geometry at times. So uh, you're probably somewhat exposed to that, but it's definitely a lot more inside of Houdini. And the reason that I say that you shouldn't start with the simulations or procedural generators is because attributes are used extensively inside of, especially simulations, but also inside of the procedural generators as well but definitely inside of the simulations. And if you don't have a good grasp on attributes, then you're really gonna struggle to do a lot of things in simulations, which is why I feel like a lot of people fail to start out with Houdini's because they go straight to simulations because that's what Houdini is known for, even though it can do so much more than that. Um, simulations is kind of where everyone wants to jump right into and never really works out. So some of the attributes that you see inside of simulations, and this isn't uh, just, it, just exclusive to Houdini. This is inside of other software packages as well. Uh, I reference Cinema 4D a lot because I started out with Cinema 4D before I used Houdini. So I'm aware of a lot of things with that. I've also used Maya a little bit, but things like age for particles, life for particles, uh, your constraints for your maybe like your rigid body constraints or your vellum constraints. You have velocity for your points on your particles. You also have density attributes uh, for your, your volumes. So there's a ton of different attributes that are used inside of simulations. And these are just a few, but like I said, there's a ton more that you can, you can see if you just drop down like a adopt network and just spawn some points then you can take a look at all of the different attributes that are that are assigned to those points and it's just a ton of different of different attributes and really the key to like i said simulations is understanding how these attributes are created how they work what's needed for each simulation like you need to to create some attributes in order to create a fire simulation for example um, so really to have an understanding of the attributes is going to get you a lot farther than just trying to jump in and maybe use like the shelf tools or whatever it is to try and create these simulations without actually understanding what it takes to go into those simulations and what everything actually means inside of those simulations. So in my opinion, understanding how to create and manipulate the attributes are not only essential for simulations, but for pretty much everything inside of Houdini. Like I said, they're used pretty much everywhere. They're created with pretty much every single node, if not every single node inside of Houdini, or at least manipulated with every node in Houdini. And you can really do a lot of different things with attributes once you have a, a good grasp on how to create and manipulate them. So start with the attributes and figure out how they all work. Just dive in. You can drop down like a point VOP and go through it lists a ton of attributes inside of there and you can go through and just kind of play around with them maybe just look up some things on youtube i've got a bunch of videos on youtube that show 
how to do different things with attributes, things like copying the points. That's a great place to start actually, is copying objects to points because you can play with the rotation, um, the scale of the objects, the position, you can do all of that. You can just mess around with the different attributes that go along with that and kind of start to understand how to manipulate some of them inside of Houdini and also why they're so important. And I'll, I'll leave a link to that video or a card that pops up right now if you want to take a look at a video for that. So that's my opinion on why people fail to learn Houdini or at least struggle to start out with it. They start out with the wrong things and they don't have a good foundation. Um, a lot of people will tell you you know, learn the basics of, of things before you jump into the like fire simulations and things. So. Uh, attributes are kind of at the at the center for that. So jump into attributes, learn how they work, understand how they work, how to create and manipulate them, and you'll get a lot farther, a lot quicker than if you just try to jump in and start creating simulations or procedural generators. But anyways, hopefully this helped you out. I do have a bunch of other videos on Houdini on my channel, so if you do want to learn Houdini, it's a great place to start. I also do some stuff with Redshift inside Houdini, so if you want to learn more about Redshift and Houdini, then definitely check those videos out as well. But anyways, thank you guys for watching, and have a good day.